step. You're going to take the bearing plate, and I like to put just a little bit of oil there, and put it back on the top of the valve case. Now, most horns have a little notch. There's a little notch there. There's a little notch in the bearing plate. Now, you want those to line up just as evenly as you can possibly make it, okay? So that's nice and even, just like that, okay? The next step is to tap the valve back into place by tapping on the top of the bearing plate. I'm going to remove the bell to make it a little bit easier to get to the instrument. Yeah, there we go. If your bell doesn't come off, that's no problem. You can just go to the edge of a table and let the bell hang off. You're going to take our little wooden dowel, okay, and there's a hole in the end so that will fit over that uh, part of the valve that comes out of the case. Make sure our notches are lined up. Okay. And what this dowel allows us to do is to apply even pressure over the entire bearing plate when we tap the valve back in. So I'm going to tap lightly, oh, three or four times. Okay, now we're going to examine it. Now what that should have done is tap the valve back in place with the bearing plate evenly seated. And you can examine it. You can look at it from the side, and visually you can tell if this bearing plate is not evenly seated. Now the way to tell if you've done that correctly is the valve should spin in the case. If you've done your job right, looks like I have pretty much, should spin freely. Okay. If it does not, you've got a problem. You need to tap the valve back out, just like we did a few seconds ago, and reseat it. Now, this is where the tricky part is, because if you keep running into problems, it means that the valve may have some uneven wear, or there's some kind of uh, something in there that's keeping it from being uh, from rotating freely. So that's when you call your repair professional. But if, you, if you've done this enough times, you can usually figure out what's going on. It's almost always something with the way this bearing plate is seated. So my notch is lined up. My bearing plate is seated evenly. My valve rotates freely in the case, as you can see there. So we're ready for the final touches. So flip the horn over. I'm going to put our stop arm back on, just like that. It should only go on one way. Most horns nowadays are designed to be uh, sort of foolproof in that respect. There's only one way that the stop arm can go back onto the rotor shaft. Now, if there is not, you need to make a note of which way you put it on. If you put it on one way and you put the horn back together and you try to play and the valve doesn't work properly, for instance, if the first valve being depressed doesn't lower an open note a whole step, you've done something wrong. If it goes up, you need to, uh, to do something about that. You need to remove the valve again and put the stop arm back on the other way. So we're going to put the stop arm on, reattach our screw. Again, it doesn't need to be super tight, just finger tight, just like that. Flip the horn back over, put our valve cap back on. Of course, if you would like to oil it, you can use some of your heavier weight bearing and linkage oil, just like that. the cap down. And now the valve is ready to be restrung. Now this was covered in a previous tutorial, so I'm going to kind of do this fairly quickly, but you can see that I've got a, a length of our Dacron trolling line cut already. We're going to tie several knots in the end, just like that, to keep it from slipping through that hole in the middle of the lever. i go through just like that around the opposite side of the stop arm. I'm going to loosen our valve lever screw, loosen our stop arm screw, go around in a figure eight, just like that. Snug that screw, not over tight, just snug underneath, through the hole in the end of the valve lever. Oops, got caught there around the string in the stop arm or in the end of the valve lever. Tie a little knot. This is a little tricky, just like that. Go underneath. Pull that snug. Swing that up. Drop my screw. Driver. Just like that. Check your tension looks pretty good and now you can adjust the height of the valve by loosening the stop arm screw. Get 
at your valve at the desired height. Snug that screw. You can check the tension here. That's a little loose, so I'm going to tighten up that in the end of the valve lever. Back down. That's pretty good. And there you have it. The valve has been disassembled and reassembled.